representing the Institute for Intimately Small Things, who had a major role in producing this piece called Back to the Land, which consists of a giant uh, hot pink Like a fabric. It's a post-apocalyptic picnic blanket with uh, electronic sensors, which filters the sound and uh, rebroadcasts it. Uh, the entire piece uh, alters your perception on many levels, both optically, visually, sound, temperature. Temperature. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are interested in thinking about alternate forms of ecological consciousness. So, how can we start to feel, develop relationships with the land that are different? Because. I mean, as a society, we have a very kind of sick relationship with the land right now. Um, and so this is just an experiment. I would say that there isn't a grand uh, conceptual theme behind this other than the sort of transformation of our relationship to the natural world and thinking about the nature of artificial versus natural things. Um, so we're just sort of presenting this very highly mediated plastic pink experience as a way of thinking about how how do we change how, how do we change and where do we go from here really. pink is so artificial yeah maybe pink. the most artificial yeah pink is the opposite of grass yeah pink is, this pink is uh, iridescent um, so it extends beyond the limits of the fabric itself. I mean, one of the things that we envisioned, particularly in the landscape of Cordoba, was that the, the people that would come in would be kids, and I think that's, it's totally <laughs> as you can hear. <laughs> yeah, it can work on very low and high conceptual levels. Yeah. I mean, on one hand, the domes, you know, we kind of were thinking of Buckminster Fuller, or we were thinking of the, uh, the Dymaxion dome utopias he inspired in the 1960s and 70s that kind of crashed and burned. And they were in some ways embarking on a similar project. This, this garment has in mind, but, um, but on the other hand, they're just plastic domes. <laughs> My work had some similar overlap with the types of things Catherine was interested in, mainly uh, media ecology, how we experience the environment uh, through media, using media, and how that impacts behavior and feelings. And so I, I usually create interactive work uh, somewhere in this genre. The, the garment actually has a series of uh, photo sensors, real basic sensors that are just reading the modulation and light and then transmitting that to uh, kind of the rig here. Um, and it's just sampling the space live with the microphone and then using that data to kind of change the sounds in different ways. So we have um, delay being added in, so the more people interact, the more delay gets added, some reverb, some basic effects. We just wanted to kind of capitalize on the interaction and have it be sort of a fun feedback experience. It's, it's a lot of fun to see the emergent phenomena of what happens and the kid noises are a lot of fun because they're you know, a higher frequency and, um, and I think once they sort of get a sense of their own empowerment through the sound, they really start to play with that, um, more so than I've seen the adults do, so I enjoy that aspect. costume designer and uh, Katie contacted me when she decided she wanted to use fabric. She figured she needed a fabric guru and that's who I am. <laughs> we, we started with just a piece of fabric and we kept adding elements like the zippers and the domes and trees and what, however we were going. We just, everyone just added a little piece of themselves to it. It was really fun. It's, it's just kind of how we imagined it, almost a little more. There's more to it than we expected. The interactive yeah. unzipping of things, we never even put that together that people would want to unzip it. Like we thought unzipping it would make it easier to store. 
So it was kind of a, oh, well, this is for us, but then in fact it became part of the installation. And I just love how the pink makes the grass look greener. <laughs> Thank you.